of you, I don't think, um, I see any familiar faces might have taken that course. Um, and I also, this is my third time speaking, I don't know if I see any familiar faces here. Um, and lastly, I'm a freshman at Yale University. I recently finished my first semester, and I'm interested in physics, physics and chemistry, which those were long-time interests throughout high school. Um, and more recently, I've developed interest in computer science and economics. So that's enough about me. I see you're here to see some other information. So this is the outline of what I'm going to be talking about. So first of all, uh, first off, I'm going to be talking about an overview of the different competitions that some of you may participate or some of your children may participate in. Uh, first, going over middle school. There actually aren't that many middle school competitions out there. I'll just name uh, some of the biggest ones and I'll name some of the high, uh, big high school competitions, and then I'll talk about some competitions that you can participate in both in middle school and in high school. Um, so that will come at the end. Those are probably the ones that you might be more interested in. Um, again, there are a lot of competitions out there. I'm not gonna talk about every single one of them. This is just the, the quick and dirty, uh, which of these competitions are the most prominent and most people participate in. Um, now, I'm also gonna be talking about how to introduce competitions to your school. So perhaps you go to a school that traditionally hasn't been uh, doing a lot of these competitions, and I'm gonna talk about how you can bring your school uh, to start doing those competitions if they aren't currently offered. Uh, next, I'm gonna be talking about research. I know this is an extremely hot topic nowadays, um, but like how to get research opportunities, like how do you manage to get yourself into a lab as a high school student, maybe even as a middle school student, uh, that can be tricky. And I'll also talk about science fair competitions. I've actually separated that from the original competitions part. So the science fair part is gonna get its own spot at the bottom. So don't panic if you don't see like Intel STS or whatever up here. Um, and at the bottom, I'm gonna talk about which competitions I did, or just the main ones. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about how I managed to achieve some sort of success in each of them. So, and if there are any questions at any point while I'm talking, feel free to just stop me. So, are there any questions as of now? Okay, I would hope not. Um, so, part one, I'm gonna talk about competitions. So, in middle school, I'm going to be talking about these two big <coughs> competitions. They're pretty high profile. Um, First one is the Toshiba Explorer Vision Contest. The next one is the Young Scientist Challenge, yes. Two other questions. Are you gonna hand out notes and not taking, uh, do we need to take notes of those or are you gonna share that in an email with us later? On um, sure. so. Uh, no, we wanna share the slide. Yeah. Do you have a handout? Do I have a handout? I do not have a handout. No handout. Do um, that's that's up to you. You don't you don't have to. If you if this, if you want to keep this information down somewhere, you might want to. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about these two competitions for middle school, um, and in high school, I'm going to be talking about these competitions. Again, I'm not going to be going over science fairs. Um, and then the last two are the ones that are available both to middle school and high schoolers, um, and so I'll be talking about those at the very end. So jumping right into things, for middle school, we have the first one is the Toshiba Explorer Vision competition. Um, this is actually a very broadly ranged competition. You can participate it starting from kindergarten. Um, so if any of you may have younger siblings, they may be able to participate it as well. Um, now the way that they operate this competition is that there are different divisions. So there might be kindergarten to second grade, third grade to fifth grade, sixth grade to ninth grade, and so on. Um, and essentially this is a team competition, so you're going to be gathering some of your friends, your peers, um, in the same age group, and then what you're doing is you can essentially pick any sort of scientific field to go into, do some research about it, you're going to need five sources, um, and what you do is you propose a future technology. Um, you, you essentially, you have to write a report, it has different sections which include abstract proposal, uh, future impacts, but the actual report you need to go a lot more in depth. And so I, I listed this link at the bottom in case any of you might want to write that down. You can also search the title above. Um, but yeah, there are, there are actually a lot of uh, different awards that you can win for this competition. So I don't know, it, it may be interesting to, to try this because it actually doesn't require you to do uh, lab research, but rather just to propose something. So what you need is a lot of knowledge about a certain topic and a sort of creativity. 
um, so that you can try to think of a, a technology for the future. Um, so are there, uh, that's, a, that's just a quick overrun of what this competition is. Does anyone have any further questions about it? <coughs> okay. Now this next one is, it's, you might call a science competition. It's one of the more prominent science competitions that uh, are available to middle school students. However, you don't actually really need to do any science. Um, so I actually participated in this competition when I was in middle school. Um, what you do is you create a short video um, trying to solve a certain everyday type of problem. Um, and essentially, the, they have different, there's a breakdown on their website where they talk about what are they looking for in this competition. And uh, essentially, the greatest component is creativity. So what they want is a creative solution to something um, that, that you might run into every day. Um, and I, 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 I listed here that you need to have done extensive research on this topic because what they're looking for is that you're very knowledgeable about what you're talking about, and so your solution is something someone else might have overlooked simply because they don't know enough. Um, again, like this competition, it's open to middle school students. It's not terribly um, like knowledge based. It's more uh, testing your creativity. And so, if you're interested in this, uh, you can maybe enter in this competition. <laughs> Um, I won't talk about this in great detail simply because I don't think I have, uh, I can give really advice about this. Um, but to say, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> is there any labs involved here? Uh, no, so in, in, in these middle school competitions, they, they don't really want you to get into the lab yet. So this is just, you, you make a video, you don't have to do any sort of research. The research you do is more like uh, looking up uh, sources online and learning about the topic rather than doing experiments or something like that. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah. So what the video about is like the kids just uh, talk about what they have learned and the solutions? Yeah, so they have example videos on their website if you want to take a look. Um, I One of the videos was about Raleigh scattering. It's a phenomenon that explains why the sky is blue. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but essentially they, they kind of talk about a certain concept, explain it very clearly, um, that's very important to show that you really understand what you're talking about. And then you try to say like, okay, I apply this idea from one place to another place. In, in like a creative manner, yeah. So, you, yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay. So yeah, these are just the middle school competitions. Um, to be honest, there's not a whole lot to talk about. So high school is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Um, so, First, I'm going to be talking about the three major academic Olympiads. Um, and there's a reason why I split them and gave them each their own slide, because there are slight differences in each of them. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is the Biology Olympiad. So it consists of three rounds. The first one is open to everyone. So um, if, you're, if you're a high school student, some middle school students might even be able to take it at, their high, at a local high school. Um, but anyone can sign up. Generally, there's a registration fee of about $3. Um, and what it is is a 50 minute multiple choice test. Plain and simple, it's, it's just knowledge based. And the top 10% of students qualify for the semi-final round. So um, this, is, this is, you can take it without having taken any class or, or something like that. And if you're homeschooled or something, or if your school doesn't offer it, you can either try to take it at a local high school or you can try to bring it to your high school, which I'll talk about later. Now, in the semi-final round, this is, I think about like 500 or so students qualify to the semi-final round. Um, this is a two-hour exam. You can again take it at your high school um, where they offer it. And it's a three-part test. There's two multiple choice parts. Uh, one of them is a true, true or false section. And there's also essay questions. So they're testing how well you, not only like how well can you take a test, but how much do you really know? Like what can you explain? Uh, how can you apply your problem solving skills? Now, the, the most prestigious level, or I guess essentially the second most prestigious level, uh, is making US camp for biology. Um, so this takes the top 20 students who perform on the semifinals, and they're flown out to, I believe, the University of Maryland um, to spend a few weeks, I believe 12 days. Um, and what they do is they, they grill you, they, they teach you a bunch of things for around 10 days, um, and then they, they test the, the 20 students 
And from there, they get the top four, which are chosen to represent the US uh, at the IBO, which is the International Biology Olympiad. Um, and so generally, the first round takes place in uh, late February to March. So just to give you a uh, reference for the time frame, it's in about two months or so. Um, so if there are any questions about this, I can take them down. So you'll see that the, the next two uh, competitions that I talk about are, are relatively similar, um, but there are slight differences. So the next one is the Physics Olympiad. Again, there's three rounds. The first round pre preliminary, you can take it anywhere. Um, it's slightly different in that it's 75 minutes and 25 questions. Um, this is, the only knowledge you need to take this test is a knowledge of mechanics concepts um, and a math proficiency of up to pre-calculus. So it's, it's not, doesn't require too much, uh, I guess, math depth, but you just need to have the problem solving skills uh, working. And around the top 300 students qualify for the, for the semifinal round. And so when you get to the semifinal round, again, you can take it at your high school. Um, it's three hours, it tests uh, essentially all topics. So you have mechanics, uh, ENM, modern physics, uh, all that stuff. And more recently, they've added this sort of breakdown. So this is kind of why I split this up into an, its own slide. Um, so again, you have the top 20 students qualifying for camp, but you also have this gold, silver, bronze, and honorable mention. So how this works is gold is about the top 10% of students um, that take the semifinal so, so not the, not like biology where they take the top 10% for the open round, but this is the top 10% from the semifinal round. Uh, silver, I believe, is around 20 or 25. Uh, bronze is about 40, and honorable mention is the top 66, so top two thirds of people who take the semifinal round. So it's, it's slightly different. And there's also another difference in the final round in which there's five people who qualify for the traveling team, uh, but one person is an alternate, so they don't actually get to compete unless something unfortunate happens. Um, but anyways, the, the pre pre preliminary exam takes place in late January to February, so um, if any of you are interested, you should, probably should have registered already um, and be taking it very soon. So does anyone have any questions about this? Yeah. So anybody can take the preliminary exam? Yeah, so in, when I was in high school, we even had middle school students coming to our high school to take it. So as long as you register on time, you, you are able to take it. Okay, so we need to go to the website to register, right? So um, what you do is you need to go through uh, a certain organization. So you might want to ask the high school um, you need to communicate with the with the teacher who runs that, so you might send an email to them asking for them to refer you, or I believe Springlight actually offers you to take it here. So if you want to take it here, you could take it here, I guess. Um, but yeah, you can't just take it at home. It does need to be proctored. Uh, 